Hello, pool fans around the world. On behalf of AccuStats Video Productions, it's our great pleasure to welcome you to the 42nd U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Thank you very, very much. We're here live in the AccuStats Arena at the beautiful Sheraton Norfolk Waterside Hotel in Norfolk, Virginia, our gracious host and our home of the U.S. Open for the past three years. This is day number six of our seven-day event. We are close to crowning a champion, a little more than 24 hours from now, but there's a lot of business to take care of between now and then. Some of that business involves me thanking our three signature sponsors once again, Diamond Billiard Products for providing this gorgeous Paragon table, Aramith Belgian Billiard Balls for our TV Pro Cup sets and our measles balls, and also to Simonis for the Tour Blue 860. Those companies have been loyal to AccuStats and Professional Pool for so long. They're the gold standard of the industry, and we're so grateful to have them as part of our program. We also want to take another opportunity to say thank you to you, our fans. You know, um, loyalty is something that is often taken for granted. Well, I can assure you it's not taken for granted by not only AccuStats, but by our great players and champions that come here each year and see mostly the same faces, some new ones, which we love to have. But you guys are all part of this, and we don't uh, have an, an open without you. So from the bottom of all of our hearts, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for helping make the U.S. Open the most prestigious tournament in the country. Thank you very much. All right, as I said, uh, we're getting close to the end. Now, we started out five days, six days ago with 139 players representing over 20 countries. We have 12 players left. There's eight on the one loss side, four on the undefeated side. You'll be seeing those matches a little bit later on. We're going to start out here with some one loss side action. Unfortunately, someone's going to be out. The other, I believe, will finish in the ninth through 12th bracket. So with that being said, it's now my pleasure to introduce our two competitors for the opening match. From Germany, this gentleman is all of 20 years old, but that didn't stop him from winning the China Open this year nor did it prevent him from being one of six players invited specifically by Pat Fleming to compete in next month's Make It Happen doubleheader at Sandcastle in Edison, New Jersey. We've seen him play once before. We want some more, so here he is, sponsored by Predator and by Cecchio. Ladies and gentlemen, a great young player. Look out in the future. It's Joshua Filler. His opponent is an extremely familiar name in the world of professional pool and has been for the past 15 to 20 years. Not only is he no stranger to center court, but he's no stranger to center court around the world. He's been an eight-time representative of Team USA's Moscone Cup. He's a former Derby City One Pocket champion, and as most of you probably know, not only is he a former U.S. Open nine ball champion, but he's the only man ever to win the U.S. Open by throwing a shutout in the finals 11 to nothing. Sponsored by Meucci, by theschoolofpool.com, and by Ice Organics, would you kindly welcome the Prince of Pool, it's Corey Duell. Okay, thanks everybody, here we go. Race to 11, winner breaks, and at this time, I have the honor to send it upstairs to our commentary team, to Mark Wilson, and to four-time Hall of Famer, Danny DiLiberto. Take it away. Once you arrive at day six of the U.S. Open, you will only find the best of the best. Today's match finds an extremely hot and resurgent Corey Duell, who is playing an even hotter Joshua Filler. Mark Wilson and Danny DiLiberto on the call, and Danny, tell us a little something about what we can expect to see in this match. Well, Joshua Filler beat Alex Pagulian, who is very tough to beat, and then the next match he beat uh, many Hall of Fames and Bamboni. He he's like tied for winning the U.S. Open, and Corey Duell is like an underdog to be where he is right now, but he's playing pretty well to still be in the tournament. Yeah, you got to really get it winnowed down to get to day six here. It's 
We're down to 12 players left, I believe, going into the day. <laughs> There's been tons of talent eliminated. There really was probably 60 guys easily that could win first place in this tournament. That's the general consensus. And there's a lot of guys that definitely could go deep in this tournament. And they're long since uh, by the wayside, including five-time U.S. Open champion Earl Strickland and five-time U.S. Open champion Shane Van Boning. Fuller is left-handed, slender, fast, super accurate. If Corey was to maintain any type of an edge whatsoever, it would be one, experience in big time matches, and two, perhaps on the kicking and safety side. We're not sure how good Filler plays the other components of the game because his offense overrides any deficiencies that he might have in other aspects of the game. Well, I'm anxious to see Filler play other games like in uh, Edison. To make it happen, we got straight pool and eight ball. Well, that's bad news for Corey. The wing ball and the uh, head ball went in the side. So two balls in on the break. Filler has a long two ball here to open up his account. Not an easy position to play on the three along the long rail. Yeah, tough shot and tough position. But I don't think he's going to try to play safe. I think he's going to fire away. Got to really come with a stroke to get to the three. Slightly elevated. Wow. <laughs> Look at that shot. Oh, forget That's it. That's firepower. <laughs> forget it. Really good. Unbelievable. That's all I could say. I've been around 60 years, and I'm still saying unbelievable about this guy. Yeah. Just a pure ball maker. Look he, at that speed. He may end up being able to rival Jason Shaw. I don't think he'd be a, a more powerful stroke, but he's a very accurate player. And we both contend that Jason Shaw is the, one of the most accurate we've ever seen. Well, if Filler keeps winning, I think we're going to see Shaw and him. Shaw is one of four remaining players that's undefeated. <laughs> See how fast he plays, and he's just cruising through this rack. He looks like he's got everything. Great way to open up the match, win the leg, break and run out. And... Uh, Definitely let your opponent know that you're here and you're for real. Score now is 1-0, Filler. And he beat Shane Van Boning, who I think is the best player ever lived. And I don't know, this guy's they got to put up with him probably for 30 more years. This is the way he beat Shane. It wasn't that uh, Shane had much say in it. Filler jumped out to a big lead early just due to the fact that uh, his offensive prowess allowed him. He then let out a scream that uh, rattled the entire room, sounded like a World Wrestling Federation type of thing. I was clear on the other end of the room, and I knew who it was. After what match? Shane Van Boning and Filler. Oh, I don't blame him feeling that good. Shane is a great player, very competitive. Oh, and Shane's playing well. Uh, it, Shane lost his opening match with Nick Vandenberg. He did not play poorly. And then thereafter, he just shut people down all the way till he got to Filler, who returned the favor and shut Shane down. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Shane lost that match. I would say that more he ran out of time. Cue ball. Okay. This is a little more like what Corey's going to need. Get to the table. Maintain some control. He ne he definitely needs to generate offense from this opportunity, though. The only ball he made was the cue ball. 
and the balls are all open, one to the two might be the toughest. Corey's kind of a funny guy, a great player. He tries the the, <laughs> the UK professional snooker tour periodically, tries to go through Q school, and does reasonably well at that too for someone that doesn't get much time on the 6x12. I believe he ran third, and uh, the people that beat him was Chris Melling and Alex Pagulian. Of course, Alex has been Canadian national snooker champion two years in a row. Shot a perfect game. Corey fell just a little straight on this, Danny. Yeah, he did. There's, there's a hint of an angle there. I guess he can muscle up and get the cue ball back to the center of the table. Right word is muscle. Doesn't have much angle. He's going to have to pound this to get the angle. I think he's just drawing for the center of the table. I think he can stroke it there. Just hit the right side of the pocket. Did he overstroke it? I think he might have. He did. Yeah, he's going to, we're going to be looking at a safe here. Due to the fact that he was unable to complete this run, he definitely needs to make an effective safety here and get himself back to the rack in this game. He has accomplished that. Well, he didn't quite snooker him. Oh, well, then that's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he got behind the eight enough, but now looking at this view, perhaps not. But I think we'll be seeing a safe. I don't think Filler is going to gamble on trying to cut it in or bank it. I think he might bank it here. It, and given the camera view, great camera work here by the AccuStats crew, you can see he does have the straight, straight back bank if he wants it. Looks like that's what he's playing. Okay, Gory. Tough shot. Now, for sure, you got to cash this in. Yeah, I well, think that's how you beat Filler. Every chance you get to run out, you better. I don't think he has it. <laughs> don't quite have it. No, I don't think so. I think the six has got him just enough. It's hard to tell. If he does, he'd have to slow spin and kind of arc it around the edge of the six, and that's not easy from that range because the six ball is close to the five. Well, you know, Corey is pretty creative. Mm -hmm. He might be the reason they came with that Rule on the break, because he was soft breaking it, making balls. You know, he. I like the attempt, though. He tried to stiffen up the bank, I don't and know. it just grabbed too much. I think. <laughs> it was too tough of a shot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It sure was, especially with this guy. Perhaps that's why he felt like he should go ahead because he had ball in hand, open layout, didn't connect. Then he played a couple of safeties and gave up a bank, and he thought maybe this is my best chance to win this rack. But look how soft he shot and how far the cue ball went. Yeah. Oh, Filler. he didn't make the nine. Does the seven pass the eight? No. Uh, I don't think it does. Here's me. Cross corner bank on the seven and play the nine with the cue ball. <laughs> You're right. Well, if he hits it that good, he could scratch hitting the nine. Now he played the combo. The eight's going to get the nine. <laughs> That's not what Corey Duell needed to see. <laughs> <laughs> Two zero now. Inadvertent mistake. And, you know, Filler, I don't think, should have gone after the nine there just because he didn't have a backup shot if he failed. Well, you shouldn't have shot the combination either. No, he shouldn't have. Yeah, I think he should have played the cross corner bank in the cue ball. It all worked out. Nobody will know the difference tomorrow. 
And perhaps that was just a little bit of youth there. Well, Joe Pesci says, Ute. <laughs> Remember the movie? Utes. Ute. <laughs> the judge says, what is a ute? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was too funny. Two zeros our score now. Feller in front. Well, Corey has no complaints on that game. He started with ball in hand and a pretty open layout, and he only got halfway through it, then tried to go through a safety exchange. That didn't work out. Took on an aggressive bank, missed that, and then Filler got lucky. But you gave him the chance to get lucky. Okay, a quick, you know, getting away from the match. Who was the judge that said that? It was Herman Munster, as I recall. It was, yeah, Fred Gwynn. <laughs> You're right. I couldn't remember Fred Gwynn. I just knew who the character was. Okay. See what happens with the break. Yeah, he got a good roll last rack. Well, he scratched once, and he made the wing ball and the head ball the first one for dry break. Another nice opening start shot here for Corey Duell. Well, like I said, Corey, you better get out when you get a chance, and he's had two chances now. This is the second. Nothing near each other. He, he should run out, but you know maybe he could be a little intimidated by Filler. If the match was to be a runaway, we would expect it to be Filler's way. If the Corey's going to win, it's going to be in a tussle. Good control. I was going to say, if anything becomes a problem, it's the four to the five. Mm -hmm. And that, and we're going to see that right now. I think he can go one rail. High ball, go one rail towards the six. Nice speed, well played, perfect angle. Yeah, clearly Corey has to be playing tremendous pool. Trickled one in. And he looks like he got perfect. Mm-hmm. Just going to roll this ahead a couple ball widths. Perfect angle to be off the cushion in good position on the eight. That's what the uh, recipe is for Corey Duell's ball management. And two to one is our score. Duell will be breaking and trailing. I remember when Corey was Joshua Filler's age. Broke into the pro tour scene. Sneaked around Florida. Yeah, played everywhere. Great sense of humor with Corey Dooley. He's so much fun to be around. I played an exhibition with him at the dog track in Hollywood, Florida. Now 
How'd you acquire that? You well, have friends there or what? Um, yeah, I lived there, and you know, and I had friends there, but they wanted Angelo Dundee, and I talked Angelo into going there, and they made it a big night with the exhibition. I say they, the Indians, Seminole Indians. In the past, they've done a lot for pool. And the only tribe that never got conquered by the United States because they couldn't go into the jungle and beat them. The Everglades? Yeah. yeah. Snakes and everything else, sickness. Alligators. Uh, Corey's interpreting what he sees in the rack, determining which side of the break box he wishes to go for him. Corey is widely regarded as the master rack technician. Six ball on the wing. Try break. No, he made the six. Oh, he, he made did. the wing ball. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was laughing because he chose the side of the table that he thought the wing ball was most likely to go in on. Mission accomplished. He's got good position here. Got to get out to have a chance. Is this cuttable though? Yeah, I guess yeah, it is. Okay, sure. yeah, real good. Needs the angle to get down on the four, and he's got the angle right now. Just stop it. Yeah, that'll get him the right angle. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's fully Perfect. aware that that's the angle. This is the only thing that could be a little dicey right here is just not following the seven ball with your hand and getting good position on the four and the rest of the rack is very straightforward. It's going to be good if he doesn't get on the rail. If he what? Mm. This makes it a little tougher. Yeah. You almost... if, yeah, you can't hit the cue ball low, and it's what you have to do. Is he going to try to lightly bump the five here? That might be his only chance. Okay. Good call, Mark. Yeah. Good thing you're not in the tournament. He wanted to make sure that he had a shot of some kind, and he knew if he cuts it in cleanly that it would be only a bank, a straight-back bank. He didn't want to fool with that. He can defend himself if this doesn't come out this nice. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you get on the 7 because the 8 is near the pocket. But you still want to get close to the uh, next ball, even though it's an easy shot. The yeah. closer you get, the better cue ball control you have. Oh, that helped a little. Hitting the nine, that is. Yeah, glides in there. Now he has a nice two-rail position. End rail, side rail near the side pocket, and then right at the nine. Got into it just a little deeper than he probably would have liked. <laughs> yeah, kind of on the 50-yard line. Yeah, he's tall and lanky. It shouldn't be a big problem. Good shot. Okay, good job, Corey Duell. Break and run out for Corey Duell to tie the match. You know, we, we you mentioned... Corey Duell's creativity and inventiveness, imagination. I mentioned his sense of humor, but he's one of these kind of gadget type of guys. And one time he was in St. Louis with me, and we got a call from Bush Beer, and they said, uh, Mr. Wilson, we've been directed to you. Um, we're filming a beer commercial, and we want Billy Bush, August Bush's grandson, to shoot the shot, but we would like you, if need be, to shoot it, and then we'll edit it so it looks like he shot it and all we want you is for 
maybe two hours of your time if you would just come down here and rack them up and then just make seven stripes on the break playing eight ball. <laughs> and I said, well, I could probably set up a few shots and make him look good, but seven stripes on the break. I played my entire life and never made seven stripes on the break. And so Corey was there, and I explained to him what they wanted, and I said, there's just no way. I mean, you could stand there for days and never do it, and uh, they don't understand. So Corey and I began playing with the rack and monkeying around, and he got that thing to finally work. Now, it's not a perfectly uh, triangular rack, but if you just glance at it, you won't notice. By putting gaps and little uh, odd idiosyncrasies in there, and he got it to where it worked on Simona's cloth with a good table, and you can make it occasionally. We filmed it, and then, but he got it where you could routinely make five stripes, and then there's a couple kisses that you have to kind of get lucky on, but that's him. He, he played with it all night long till he figured it out, and then it's typical of Corey Duell. A very creative guy. Mm hmm He loves challenges like that. None of the other pros could care less. They wouldn't no, they'd spend right. 15 minutes doing it. But <laughs> it kind of plays into what his strengths are in this match. Two twos are I score. Duel now breaking. Same side of the box he was on before. Feels like the foil. The four ball got kissed in that time. Didn't go straight in. The, the one went right in. What's he in? Uh, long, tough get on the... Oh, he's hooked, too. Well, you remember Miserac did the commercial, Miller Lite, mm -hmm. and they used him because he looks like he drinks beer. <laughs> so yeah. We had skinnier players audition, <laughs> but they picked Miserac because mm -hmm. he looks like he drinks beer. Even when you're just showing off. Yeah, great commercial. Oh, I love that commercial. It's fun. They named it one of the best commercials out of a hundred ever. Well, a little tricky. He can hit the two, but I, I don't think you'll be shooting it. Cue ball will fly around. I don't even know that he hit the two. He can hit the edge, but he's. Pushing. Well, this is worse than he had. No, this is excellent. Oh. It is? Well, because, you know, he was trying to tie up something, I mean, oh, you know, for a push part. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that part. And now he has a kick and he can be aggressive because he wants to make these prolonged games. He doesn't want to get in a fast paced shootout with Joshua Filler. He well, wants to get into a tactical game. Now that you tied the seven up, don't kick and open it up. Guess he's kicking softly the two towards the seven in the side yeah, pocket. Yeah, you got to kick softly. Oh, oh, did he get a rail? Yeah, he's going to. What a yes. great shot. Okay, and this is exactly what Corey Duell needs to, to do and then maintain, you know, control of the table when he gets those opportunities, unlike in his first attempt at the table when he had ball in hand and didn't get out. Hereafter, he's going to have to get out. But through... Uh, Crafting his run out and push out, he's going to earn himself quite likely another trip to the table here with ball hand. Okay. Better than that, but now he's sorry he tied the seven up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. If you had the luxury of knowing, but it was just every, every aspect of this rack so far, Corey Duell has played excellently. You're the underdog when you have to push out. He manipulated the balls in such a way that he's earned himself back to the table, and now he can possibly do some damage. Don't know why he would try to go that route. Multiple rail. You could have just gone one rail with ball in hand. He'd been better off to just draw it back to the center of the table or go one rail to the center of the table there. Play the other angle rather than this back cut. Oh, a miss. Okay. 
one ball with ball hand, that's unacceptable at this level. Okay, what are you going to do with the six? Are you no. going to play safe from there? He didn't mean to get this thin on the five. It's going to be really tough. You know, one thing about uh, Filler that we noticed in his previous matches is that he's sometimes a bit impatient and will try to force the issue and overpower the table with shot making. Like just take on a combination or something. I think, I think that's that what comes with youth, pal. Yeah, I, but I think that's what he's planning here. He's just going to play that eight ball and just... When you play lesser players and you miss this shot, you can get away with it because you can just make up for it in the subsequent games. Yeah, he, not a not a, a good shot for a couple of reasons. One, uh, he didn't miss it by a big margin, and he wouldn't have had a shot had he made it. It would have been this type of thing. Yeah, Corey needs... Multiple inning racks, and Filler needs one inning nine ball. What Mark is saying, that whether you make that shot or miss it, the six lines up in the same place. Good shot. Great shot. He could take the lead here. Yeah. That was savvy veteran experience there. Right, and, and Filler... Even though he's a great player, he might be learning something here. Which, for the other players, he doesn't, you know, it's not fair. <laughs> yeah, they just said he didn't learn anything more. Nice job there. Good recovery. And talking about the alligators in the Everglades, the Burmese python are taking over. They're eating the alligators whole. <laughs> yeah. I, I also will not be conquering the Seminole Indians if we have to deal with all that. Yeah, you're so. not going fishing <laughs> in the Everglades. I am not. You know, there's, there's virtually no body of water in Florida that is not likely to have alligators in it. Even your lawn. Yeah. People find them in their swimming pool, anything. To me, that's a little frightening. Ladies walking their dogs, the alligator jumps out and eats the dog. It was just a couple years ago at the pond at Disney World. Some little kid little got kid, attacked, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Corey's taking his break, and I think it's a, it's a good time because he, it's been sort of a messy match for him so far. All right, we're back underway. Corey Duell will be breaking. Four ball on the wing. Eight balls, look, no. Okay. That was dry. Made both balls, and he probably was aware that maybe he'll make both, so he played position. Very intelligent. We are playing all ball fouls, and the uh, allowance for these jackets, it makes you far more bulky. If I was in charge, I would not allow the jackets. Just because I think it looks terrible. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care what I look like. I want to be warm. 
I got a feeling, Mark, you'll never be in charge of no, I don't their think wear. So. <laughs> There'd be a lot of different rules if I was. All right. Boy, he's human. Yep. No, this is this is playing right in the Corey's hands. See, I think that the, the slow play and all that other moving, it might have hurt Pillar. He missed that ball badly. Yeah, Corey's strengths are best exhibited in multiple inning games, and Joshua's strengths is going to be best exhibited with one inning games. Look at this hit. That's a great shot. Mm-hmm. Yep, conservative position route. Now, here's a, here's a case where the jacket can be an issue. You know, I'll on anything. Slow down, cue ball. Very important nine ball here. Good stroke for the deal. Takes it home. He now leads four games to two. And this is where, you know, it's kind of interesting because Filler thus far in this match has shown just a little uh, willingness to be impatient. And uh, part of that could be attributed to youth and the experience. And a little willingness to be human. Well, <laughs> yeah, he played that combination that led to nothing. He missed it. Corey made a great bank, got out. And, the yeah, he broke and ran out. Then now this game slipped away. Filler with a wide open layout. Yeah, you know, Corey's definitely not intimidated. He's played the best players in the world. <laughs> For the duration of his adult life. So he's, no matter how good you are, Corey's played better. And he beat Mika 11 nothing in the finals of the U.S. Open. And I felt sorry. Mika could not get out from anywhere. And I said, poor Mika, this is going to affect him. He won the next tournament he played in. <laughs> and he won two consecutive U.S. Opens at one point. Yeah. Examines the rack. And he's sticking with the same side. Three balls on the wing. Made the three. Is he going to get a shot on? No, the one drop. Oh, he has a good shot on the two. Just now looking, Corey won this tournament in 2001. Corey's a very non-conforming kind of guy, and he actually flourishes in anything that sets the match apart. And he's low-key. Yeah, and by that, what I mean is something like, now you can wear your jacket or some weird rule adaptation. You can soft break. Any of those things plays right into his hands. Oh, oh he didn't need to hit that ball. That really got ugly for Corey. 
Not that yet, but that makes it tougher. Oh, five times tougher. I think six times so, tougher. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's significantly <laughs> tougher. Look I at just, and cannot foul. Yeah, makes this. He'll have position. Well, he didn't come close. Boy, good shot by Filler. Great. Yeah. Well, that was a big opportunity to have slip away. Car was well on his way to breaking and running out. Oh, he's going to get on the rail. The only thing can hurt him. Well, he's got a little room. Not much. He's going to make a good shot, which is not a huge task for this kid. Oh, maybe it is. Well, this is about the second or third time that Feller has given the game back to Corey that he, he also had well in hand. Looks like he's falling pretty straight here. Oh, he's playing for the cut shot. Tough shot. Cue ball's going to fly around a little bit. Good shot. Great job there, Corey Duell. <laughs> nice recovery. He stumbled once, five to two, Corey Duell in front. And that's actually a much more beneficial win for Corey to have stumbled and still won the game due to the fact that it's upsetting for Filler. Well, we've seen Filler stumble twice now. At least, yeah, a couple different decisions. I think the crowd is prejudiced. I think they're pulling for the American. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Filler has his girlfriend here and maybe a couple other fans, but I think the majority of everyone here is pulling for Corey Duell. The only thing I could say about Corey Duell now is he should be wearing a Buffalo Bills jacket. Thank you very much. This is Why is that? Because I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. Oh, I see. <laughs> I, it was very prejudiced. Seven ball on the wing. Duel now has five. Feller two. Really missed the head ball there. Barely hit it. One ball went. It's a legal break. Pocket. Yeah, a legal break. Well, look where the two is. Almost froze on the five. Yeah, the four nine could be a combination down the way, and if Corey feels that, that uh, he might get the worst of this, he should probably think about moving it. Gonna try to thin the two and bring the cue ball back 
behind the six ball. No, he's drawing. He's doing something else. I don't know what he was that doing. That was a naked bank. <laughs> he just went all, no, he just went all for it. Yeah, he did. Combination long bank. Boy, amazing. Miller's not used to this kind of thing. <laughs> Guy played yeah. a combination long bank, and it went in. <laughs> Jacked up, yeah. So I say naked. I mean, he's it's win or lose time. Well, it probably he decided I don't have a good safe here. I'm going to shoot. Great decision. It was, especially if he gets out the rest of the way. Part one, pretty good. Yeah. The combination's on enough that if he's laying just right, he could go for it. But if it's off just a little bit, if you're not going to get perfect, the run out's a much better choice. Yeah. Corey. Especially if you could do this. Yep. Corey's smart. He knows no take the risk here. Good shot. He didn't have much angle, and he, he imagined factored one. Yeah. On the previous shot, he'd worked the cue ball close enough that he could afford to take a little risk and power up and manipulate the pocket to create an angle from nothing. Watch out. And he's going to be okay. Yep. But it was concerning. <laughs> You're a Corey Duell fan. This is a little tricky. Yeah, looks like he's going to go with a little right English. Just check it up. Oh, great. Great speed, great shot. And Corey Doodle's second break and run out of the match occurs at the optimum time for him. He now leads this match six games to two. That certainly increases pressure on Joshua Filler, who has failed to be behind many in many of his contests here. Well, Corey's been around so long, it's tough to think of him as a young man, but he is. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Duel 891, filler 733. Extra pressure here because it's a pack your bag match. You're eliminated. That's true also. Filler came all the way from Germany. I don't know if he's going to New York and play in that tournament. Yeah, almost for certain he is. Well, then he'll stick around, go right to the Make It Happen tournament. Imagine 20 years old and win the Chinese Open. How good would those players be? I mean, we see the contingent that's here that's great, and there's lots of great ones that didn't come. So you'd have to be super, super talented to even think about it. You're right, Mark. There's the right track. He lost six in a row. Filler won the first two. <laughs> you know, in, in one of the games that Filler uh, won, he slopped in the nine ball. Remember that? He, yeah. <laughs> so. In other words, it could be seven to one. 
much better on the break this time. I don't think he's going to be successful unless the two finds the pocket. Okay, this is, well, it's not great with the five and the eight the way they are, but at least it's a shot. Teller gets to come to the table. Well, not a gimme. This is a tough a layout. You can hardly call it a road map. Are you looking at playing the one past the nine? Yes. Oh, he did so effortlessly. Yeah, the five and the eight is not really dead in the pocket as far as a combination goes. It's, it's off just enough that you probably would prefer to dislodge it if possible. Uh, that was a little shaky. Crude. He can still bank it, but that was just crudely played. Double kiss. And yeah, now things dislodges. are not going right. Uh, this is just what Corey Duell needed. Yeah, but not this. No, but the, he's back at the table. Right. I mean, I banked the ball and got a kiss. All the other matches that I've watched uh, Filler play has never run like this at all. He's just got up there and ran out every time. I told people long distance what a great player Filler is. Now he's stumbling. Corey might be banking this back at the nine. <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. If he played the combo bank in the pass game, why not? No, nope. going the other way. Well, he left a little tough layout here. Got to hit a couple rails. Long bridge. <laughs> Filler whistles at home effortlessly. Yeah, very good shot. That same casual approach that Jason Shaw uses, just never a doubt whether he'll make the shot. He's looking at the combination. I think he can, well, he's going to. Yeah, can't blame him on this one. So their combination decisions were suspect. This one, that was a full on go, bet the game. Filler wins his third rack, trails of the match six games to three. Miller's girlfriend looks more worried than he does. used to run around the country with Troy Frank, then later with Alex Pagulion. He credits Jimmy Karras with teaching him oh, some yeah. pool. He spent a lot of time. I remember when Corey was just breaking in at before the Camel Tour tournaments. He would routinely play Efren Reyes racks of rotation, 15 ball rotation, $100 a game, and Corey was big underdog, but just for the learning. It's going to be a, um, yeah, the illegal break. 
what Jimmy Karras, the rest of his late life, he, he lived in Jacksonville. I stopped to see him. He was 91, still running 30, 40 balls, but he would get tired. <laughs> he was a very nice man. I met him a couple occasions. Great player, great exhibitionist. This is a big game to win from here if he could pop this in. The only tough shot. Yep. Yeah. yeah, beat filler, you gotta make that. Was not easy, but there's a chance the rest of the rack is pretty easy. Yeah. I hope you're paying a little closer attention now. I think Corey's got his attention. He recognizes that now he's vulnerable. Not just going to overpower him in this match. Ooh, that kind of messed up the seven and nine over there a little it, bit. Nine is in the way of the seven. It looks like at least a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Really, it might pass. He doesn't take many practice strokes. <laughs> no. This is not a gimme. Now it is. Now we'll find out the seven past the nine. Mm hmm If it doesn't, he could play for the far corner. That's what he's doing. He's going behind the nine there, Mark. Just because he hit it earlier and tied it up, he had to do something extra to get to it, snook it himself. No doubt he'll hit it. What happens from here? Oh, it stopped badly for Corey. Hmm. Yeah, not well, shootable. I think you should kick at it. Yeah, you're going to lose otherwise. You're right. Best chance to win this, kick at it. Well, unless he thinks he can spin it in. He might be able to cut this in. Well, he's... <laughs> we'll see. No, but he got oh. a little bit of a roll. Oh, a little. I'd say enormous. <laughs> He's, anytime you play from there and you have your opponent kicking when he comes to the table, that's a pretty darn good outcome. Well, Filler got lucky. No, I'm, yeah, he, of course. I'm, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just <laughs> explaining that it's equaling out. Oh, that's a oh, nice boy. shot. Yeah. What a shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a crippling blow here. It is. So far, maybe Corey could do something spectacular. Mm -hmm. He's jumping. Where are you going, cue ball? Well, it's not a gimme, but 
He has a shot. <laughs> With the jump key, though. Or am I wrong? No, he's got it right Air in. Path? Yeah. No, I guess he's jumping. No, you're right. Oh, he's boy. jumping pretty good, too. Wow. What a shot. Now he's going to go three rails to the nine. <laughs> he's beating his chest. <laughs> oh, he just decided to take the cut on the nine, which is pretty easy. Six four is our score now. Yeah, the crowd, whether they're pulling for Corey or not, they clap for good play. It was an interesting rack. A lot it of was. things happened in that one. Yeah, a lot of fortunate. Certainly can't fault Corey for cutting at that ball because it did hit the points on the pocket, so it was that close. If it was any worse at all, and it, because it was off the rail, I think the better shot would have been to kick at it. It was. I think if you kick at it 100 times and cut at it 100 times, you're going to make it more times kicking it. Well, in, in retrospect now, we could say that. At the time, Corey thought he could make it, and I don't fault him because he did come close. And then he was blessed with leaving it really tough. That was never in the equation for any of us. And the guy hopped over to nine, made seven. Boy, he hit that just as pure as could be. Yeah, he doesn't look like he has any weaknesses. Well, I think impatience and a little inexperience on the tactical side, I think just what we said, but the shot making, it's above, way above pro average. But the only guy that I've seen here that really rivals it is Jason Shaw. Definitely got the audience buzzing here. Pretty Rack number good 11. crowd. Yeah, a real good crowd. But like you said, it's Friday of the U.S. Open. Rack 11, here we go. Wing ball didn't go in. Only oh, two balls one. passed. He made one, so that's going to be... The one stopped badly. He doesn't have a shot on the one. Truthfully, th this match is favoring Corey. He needs these type of racks. He doesn't want to get in a big, wide-open, fast-paced match. He's going to try to go behind the six and two. Snook at him. No, not entirely. Well, I think we're going to be seeing a jump. No, I think Corey might kick at this. I think if he goes off the end rail, that kind of kick and stick type thing. Then you'll have to, you'll have to spin it to get a, mm -hmm. a, a pull hit. He kicking at this just to hit it thin and bring the cue ball back down the table. No, he could cut at it. Tried to play it off the back of the three. He left the shot. Got to play pretty good position, though, to get to the two. He missed again. Lunged at it. Yeah. You know they're pulling for Corey when they say, come on, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I don't Isn't think... Isn't that a brilliant remark? Well, I don't think that uh, Filler's emotional outburst in, engendered any love of the American fans, for sure. Oh, look at this hit. <laughs> what a hit. <laughs> that goes in on a 6x12 right there, that hit.
Good shot, Corey. Follows up with another nice Good hit. Speed. He's got an angle to get close to the five. Yeah, the only way anything could go wrong on this position is if he got himself hooked. Anything, you get straight, you can preserve well, an angle. Angle's better, but either way. Yeah, I don't see any chance to hook except from the six to the seven, maybe. Good shot. Good angle. Another good angle. Draw the ball, get to the side on the eight. Nothing to do but make the eight, take the nine. Hey, Corey's composure looks really good. And there it is. 7-4 now, do you in front. People are pulling for Corey, of course. And you know, when you're fighting in the ring, if there's any Italians in the crowd, they yell, in the La Banza, in the, <laughs> the bread box. <laughs> Did you ever hear that? Did not. That's I like what it, they though. say. <laughs> Hit him in the La Banza. That's the bread box, uh -huh. which is stomach. <laughs> Took a three-game lead again. Getting near the end of the match, that's a good lead. Okay, eight ball in the wing. Made the head ball in the side. Oh, but the two balls a mile away. Position is tough. I don't think you should shoot this. I think Corey's supposed to figure out a safe here. What do you say, Mark? Yeah, you know, uh, nothing easy. Overcut it, hit the side rail, knock it to maybe the middle of the end rail. The cue ball's going far away. Yep. That would be one selection. But he didn't want to do that, but I don't think he's going to get the best of this. That's what the problem was. Yeah. Position was tough. The shot was tough. Made but a good shot. If he kicks for the side pocket across the table, it looks like the five might help. Yeah. Super hard kick, and then the cue ball 
naturally wants to tend to drift down table. So Towards the corner pocket. You're kicking at nothing, if that's the case. I don't know if we can quickly get the overhead, but if we do have that, I'd love to show what I think he might think about doing. Be rail first, thin on the three, and try to let the cue ball come across the table and back underneath the nine. Looks like he's kicking for the side. Could he hit it? He did. You called that. He but didn't even need the five. And the point is that oh this, is, and this was always the case. Oh, he didn't hit the four. That was the four. Thank God. Oh, right. Interesting. Made a thin hit. Over the top. Position tough. He's going to, have to make a good shot here. Not even going for it. That was good judgment. Going to make Corey earn this rack. Might have to kick another one in the side. Yeah, two cushions, I think, is the better way this time. Well, I think it's, yeah, if he wants to go in the side, two cushions for sure. Yeah, I think he can spin at one rail and hit it that good. No. Uh, let's see how. He'd have to mass A around the nine or something. Well, he's in trouble. You got to do something spectacular. He's shooting your... He, he, he looks like he's... Yeah, it comes in there with velocity this way. Mass A, you don't have any power. Oh, good hit. Good speed. Yeah, look at it. That keeps the pressure on big time. Yeah. Now, Filler can... Thin the four ball towards the corner pocket and bring the cue ball all the way around and try to use all those blockers. But a lot of things can go wrong, and we already saw uh, Corey's willing to use the jump cue. Ooh, he's not going to be able to use the jump cue this trip. I can do it. He's got two real kick. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Very tough hit. Outside chance to pocket the four, but there's a better chance even of scratching. Well, part one, hit it. Oh, well, he's trying to hit it three rails, like a play, a, kind of a kick safe. No, he's going long. Oh, he went all around it. He surrounded it. Oh, boy. Made a good attempt. Mm-hmm. Tough to go around it without hitting it. Well, if anything could stop him, Seven to the eight. Well, he got good here. Cue ball doesn't have to travel. Good shot. That was. Hardly have time to reset the shot clock as Filler runs out. Pretty classy little run out there. 7-5 is now our score.
Ken Schumann's finished racking, wiping down the cue ball. Filler set to break. Rack number 13 about to get underway. One ball found the corner. Cue ball found the corner. Two ball found. No. <laughs> Look at this. All right, Corey. One, two, three. Yeah, he made two balls plus the cue ball. Now the eight ball, I don't know if it goes anywhere. So huh, Ken's going to have to have to do a trick shot here just to get this rack off the table. Yesterday during one of the matches, Ken inadvertently picked up the cue ball in a situation remember, like this. Yeah, yeah that I was, remember it didn't affect the outcome though. The guy yeah. ran out anyway. But this is the whole game here. Falling on the eight. The rest of the balls are mm -hmm. easy. And while the eight, you know, makes it tough, Corey has to win this game. I guess he doesn't have to, but if he wants to win the match, this is gonna be a a huge moment. So hard to earn opportunities like this. Is he trying to draw into the eight here? No, 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 that would be silly. Okay, he you was just stunning get, it over with a little spin. Yeah, you couldn't get position on the five hitting them. If the five were hanging, he would have. He'll figure something out. Mm hmm Yeah, if he can work the cue ball close, he can still defend himself down there. If he doesn't like it, he can make a stop shot and just stick on the nine ball. Move the eight ball away. But he doesn't even want to go into that. He wants to make sure he gets some kind of a shot on the eight. Truthfully, I don't think a breakout is the best in his best oh, interest. No, he no. wants to get down below and play the eight in the in far the corner right. pocket. I like that. Don't hit the ball as you're gambling. You might not hit him out in the open. Right. Play position for the eight. Well, that's going to be tough. Unless he shoots this in the side. Or does he have a billiard? Interesting shot. He's going to stun across the table and back underneath the eight. Oh, oh great shot. Wow. Great shot. Yeah. All the people appreciate it, too. Just don't miss, Corey. Very smooth cueing action. I have to give Corey credit for that. He maximizes it. Oh, great shot. Boy, he got out a heck of a rack here. <laughs> yeah, that shot would have been on a 6 by 12 as well. It did not rattle home, but cleanly hit the middle of the pocket. The position on the eight was great. Yes. Oh, he's well, three games ahead again. Well executed. 8-5 is our score. Corey's playing great. 870 on our TPA. Feller at 776.
a lot of good stuff to talk about during this match, you know, and that's the thing about pool. Mm -hmm. Every game is different. Yeah, going into the match, you'd have to worry that Corey might not get enough opportunities, much like Pat Gillian and uh, Van Boning before him. They were both playing great, but they just didn't get enough opportunities. Corey, on the other hand, has been getting the opportunities and, for the most part, has taken advantage of them. He has. Three ahead <clears throat> at eight. That's pretty good. Right. I only have Corey listed here for three unforced errors. Naturally, you're going to give up some scoring to a great shooter like Filler, but you can't help him at all with unforced errors. Corey's been thus far able to minimize those. Six ball on the wing. Corey back to the left side of the box as he paces it. Cue ball rimmed the pocket, came back out. But the two ball found the pocket. Legal break. And he's got a combination. Make a ball. Yeah. I think it's go time. I think you take your chances from here. The oh, of course. Likelihood of you of winning the game. Now, this, this is perhaps the biggest shot of the rack. It is. This one wins... The match, or the game, anyway. Good shot. Why aren't they applauding? That was a good shot. Oh, trickles. <laughs> Yeah, he killed it too much. <laughs> That's got kind of... Yeah, a lot of work to do. Well, the nine is right on line, you know, and it's hard to get around that nine. He could draw it and play the four in the far corner pocket, it looks like, maybe. But that's a little bit thin for that shot, too. Yeah, he got a little tough. A lot tough. I Main guess, thing, don't miss. I guess he is drawing it to play it in the far corner. Okay. Good shot. Like to have a little land over you across the table. Didn't get a lot. And the five passes the six. Now, here's the decision. Do you go forward? Do you punch it across? Well, if you go forward, you might be too far away. I think you punch it. So it's, I think it's going to be kind of that in-between, not effective top spin, but kind of that stunned top spin. And just try to get out to the center of the table or just past the center and don't miss yeah conservative well he didn't hit it hard and he did all right but now he's still got stuff to do that six ball in the periphery of vision also hampers accuracy just a little hint bothersome he really needs to maintain that smooth transition that he's displayed throughout the match. That's the one strength that his Corey's had. He's not had any quick ones. No problem. Look what he did with Whitey. Gorgeous shot. <laughs> right there. That, that tells you how he got here. When well, you make he, that type of shot under pressure. Could he reach the cue ball now? I oh, mean, he can go two ways This here. is the jacket issue, too. This is, I would remove my jacket if I was him. Now he's going to opt to go to the side. Is he going to go three rails forward or draw two rails? So, I like going oof. forward. And then having to use the bridge. Some of Corey's snooker background comes into play here a little bit. Might mm. be drawing it. I you like know, going forward. Drawing with the bridge is much more difficult feel-wise. So I think going forward in this case, if you're going to play it with the bridge, I think going forward, maybe a little high left. Oh, he can't get comfortable with the bridge. Hmm. Yeah, he's got a 
open shot here, but it just plays precarious anyway. And the bridge doesn't, he looks a little flimsy. Do not go into the side pocket. Either determine to go short or long, but do not risk in the side pocket. Oh, what a shot. The nine helped him. <laughs> Things are really working out Corey's way. He brushed that nine ball. And but he got on the rail. Uh, well, yeah, he's delighted. <laughs> <laughs> He'll trade it. Oh. Oh. Hit a little of the point. All right. Well, a little tester here for game. A, lot, a little uh, for tester? The game. Big yeah. tester. I think he's going to make it. He feels like winning, and he's confident. I think he's going to make it. What do you think? <laughs> That's Corey Newell right there. He's staggering away from the table, but a great run out. Terrific run out. Yeah, 9-5 now. 9-5. He is showing some heart here. Yeah, he had to make a lot of shots in that, that particular rack. Much like we said in the opening, resurgent Corey Duel. This is vintage Corey Duel. We haven't seen that much for quite some time. You're right. The last few years have been kind of blah for him. He Feller, Feller appears to be having fun. That's good. That's right. a prime primary component of this. If you want to play good pool, you the have to be able to enjoy yourself. Calm, cool, and collected. That's what he looks like to me. Joshua is mumbling to himself. Well, he was smiling and laughing. No, I mean, I caught the mumbling. <laughs> oh. Pal, you're young. You're going to have a lot of good tournaments. Like I said, his girl looks sadder than he does. That was a big, big break and run out. Corey almost dunked the cue ball on the side to begin with. Then the two ball went in the side, and Corey made some things happen. Long range, very difficult shots. Yeah, Corey Duell's TPA, 884. That's a very high standard. Three ball on the wing. Oh, the one went right in the side. Where are you going, nine? How does he get the nine to go that far? Beautiful. He's got a shot. Kind of a funny angle. He's the two balls just past the side, and you can for sure avoid uh, any kind of a scratch here if you go soft. But powering up now, the point comes into play. Corey's just going to stop it. Yep. Well, just a Good little choice. draw. Yeah, that was nice. He he worked the cue ball back three inches and really helped himself out quite a bit on this. Shot plays, you know, another 10 or 15% more accurately from here than three inches forward. He's got a full pocket. Head still, smooth cueing action. That's the key. Boy, he's playing great. <laughs> this is the best I've seen Corey play in 20 years. You're right. Corey's smart enough to realize how important this rack is. He will not get uh, him on the hill. Well, and and also uh, 
psychologically really hurts his opponent too. Well, he's already done a lot of psychological harm. True. True that. Yeah. Uh oh. We got him. Oh boy. <laughs> Perfect speed now. I have to tell you, uh, he, he used the extreme edge of the pocket. He's not even grinning about it. Yeah, he kinda, <laughs> I thought it hung. But he's still got all this in front of him. He's, oh, but as long as that ball fell, he's okay. This is nothing, believe me. Side pocket. Maybe the corner. He goes in the side. No, nope, corner. Big ball again. He scored it. He's playing good, Danny. He's playing I mean, terrible. Under, under these conditions, he's playing super. It's on the hill. Ten times. Wow. Unbelievable. Back to back, breaking runouts. Five games ahead. The guy's got to beat him six in a row. And Filler definitely can do it, but he's not shown that so far in this no. match. No. You know, this is a case of probably Styles that's helping. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Great playing. Eight ninety five now in the TPA the duel. Here's our break performance, Danny. Yep. Duels had nine breaks. Seven successful, zero scratches on the break. That's an important stat right there. Zero scratches. That way you're not giving the guy ball in hand with open layouts. Filler, on the other hand, six total breaks. Only two were successful. He had two scratches. He had one that was illegal, which is different than a scratch. Corey looks calm. No, he's he's been keeping his head still, very smooth. And the balls that he uh, oftentimes in the past would miss, he's he's made just barely. You know, he barely miss them in the past. Now he's barely making them. But they're falling in. The two ball in that last rack was the extreme, or was it the? Oh, it might have been the six ball. Yeah, six ball. Wobbled, hung for a moment, and then worked its way down to the bottom of the pocket. Five ball on the wing. Last break of the match for Corey Duell. Dry break, looks like. Okay, this figures to make the match more interesting. Not going to change the pace. He's going to shoot the way he always does. Yeah, if anything, he's in a hurry to win six games. Got the perfect rack to start with. Good position shot there. Straight top spin. Is he going to get on the rail? That's when he missed one. 
No, he's okay. Yeah. He's not great, but he's okay. I think he's just fine for him, especially. And he is. Nice pace. Quickly gathers a game back from a dry break by Corey Duell. Our score now stands at six games for filler, ten games for Duel. This has been a terrific match so far and only figures to get better. Boy, he made that rack look easy, didn't he? He did, yeah. Under he... the heat? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> He's a ball-making machine. Ken Schumann doing his very best to get them all frozen. Yeah, very hard worker. Okay, this time. He almost knocked him over. <laughs> One in the side. Here comes the two. Oh, boy. Looks like the four might have got in there just enough. Hard to tell from our angle. Well, he's got a tricky shot with the three anyway. It's hard to tell. Looks like he might have the shot on the two. He seems to be going for it confidently. Oh, he's got it, yeah. Yeah. Now, here's where something could go astray. Get it? Didn't quite go astray, but it went a little tough. What a shot. Super accuracy. Look what the cue ball did. He didn't need to hit the six. Got it tricky again. What do you do here, Mark? Look where the five is. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, this is tough. He's going to yeah. make a heck of a good shot, no matter what he does. Good decision. Mature decision. Was a good shot. And yeah. Good the best part of the shot was the choice. Made the right decision. Corey's definitely glad to be back at the table despite the difficulty of the circumstance. Corey's looking at, what, two railing this? Yeah, he might be able to hit it. Yeah, it's hard to tell if he can get in between the five and seven. He's looking hard. I think he could. I think he could, Mark. Just super soft. So huh? does he. Super soft, I guess. Yeah. Oh. oh, what a nice hit. What a good shot that is. Did he snooker him? No. He didn't. Good try. Thing about this is position is automatic. Did he go behind the nine? Doesn't appear. No. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Oh, no. Okay. I thought he was measuring to see if it goes by. He was shooting. He's not wasting any time. Right, didn't change his pace at all. <laughs> he didn't give me a chance to get reset. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. 
10-7 now going to be our score. And Fiddler's TPA is coming up. 818 for him, 885. This kid's showing some heart himself. I really like Corey's uh, uh, shot. I didn't know he had that, but he... Made he, a great shot. Yeah, he played a cross-corner bank with the safety build in. Didn't all work out. A lot had to go right. Going to you from the Sheraton Waterside. This is a pretty interesting place. Right outside the back door, Navy vessels everywhere, huge battleships. And, and it got more interesting, and, you know, with all the restaurants and things yeah. next door. Never had that. A lot of nice places. Ken Schumann cleaning up the cue ball. Filler breaking from his preferred side. Eight ball on the wing. Well, the one didn't go. Two, Two did. went. And he's got a shot. Good <laughs> shot, yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is going to get shaky, this match. I told you, it's been a great match. It's going to get better. It's the only way it can go. Take a moment to check. I think he's going to just two, two, or I mean, top spin to the center of the table. No, he was able to hold it for the side. Well, he's going to get a little further away from the six. But he got a good angle here. Yep. Nothing slowing him down. Oh, this match is going to get really interesting. Boy, oh boy. Ten heaters are a score. Nice break and run out there for filler. Great. 837 is his TPA. He was below 800 for the majority of this match. Now moving up to the professional level of 850. Corey Duell at 885. Hasn't shot for a while.
Well, Pat Fleming said this was going to be a great match, and I have to agree with him. Four ball on the wing. No, that didn't go in. Two ball did. One set up just below the nine, way down table. Tough shot. Yeah, I would say. Well, the thing about it, if he makes it, position will be easy. But yeah. shot, definitely not easy. No, I see what you're saying, yeah. He, it could be his last shot. Well, he's shown some judgment here. Oh, he's here, shooting so. it for sure. Is he? Thought he showed some restraint Holy earlier. God. What a shot. What a great shot that was. Boy, this guy is a player for sure. Gonna have to hit rails here. Didn't stop him. No. He's one of those special talents. You don't see this very often. Most guys have to work a little harder at some of this stuff. He just seems to instinctively have it. He's going to be one game behind. <laughs> Yet another break and run out. Ten nine. Oh, he started to cheer. He showed some emotion. Yes, he did. <laughs> Corey must be thinking I'm playing a machine here. This guy's not human. What a great player he is. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Yeah, he's stood tall here under maximum pressure. He played good when he dominated the matches. Oh, look at the rat. Rack track. Yeah. Four in a row, Joshua Filler here. The most crucial time to win four in a row, because Corey only needs one. Maximum of two games left. Eight fifty three over the pro average. Bob Jewett in attendance. You yeah, know, writer for Billiard Digest. Love straight pool. He sponsored some straight pool. Okay, here we go. Once again, eight ball on the wing. I think it's a dry break. Corey's got a shot. It's been a little while. But that was a nice run. A good flurry by Filler here late in the match. He's got a chance. He's got a good chance here. Or I want to hit the full side of the pocket here. Oh, you got good on this. Got to get good on the three. Yeah, the three to the four transfer here. That's going to be really pivotal. Oh, he Perfect. got part one. Perfect angle. 
Now, will you play it in the far corner, do you think? I, I think, think you should. go to far corner because less chance to snooker yourself. And the five plays so easy that way, yeah, too. He knows this. You were right. This way he didn't have to force anything. Nothing can go wrong except missing. Both players saying, showing worlds of heart. Well, he would have liked to got straighter, but he might have to play the six in the same pocket. No, he killed it. And overcut it and killed great. it. So. Great. Great shot. Corey just needs to stun over for the seven. Or draw back. He can just draw back a little bit, yeah. Boy, he's showing some heart. He is. The guy just oh, got got in the match. No, just hit him with a heck of a flurry there. He's got a chance to win the match. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. He showed some heart so far. One more shot. People are going to howl. <laughs> One of the most entertaining matches of the week, and we've had a lot of great ones here, Danny. He finally smiled. <laughs> I know Chris Salvin at home enjoyed this. Well, yet another great edition of World Class Pool brought to you by AccuStats, the worldwide leader in billiards programming. On behalf of all of us, thank you for caring about pool. We care about you. See you back soon and so long for just a while. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shox dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters.
the evolution of Q training continues. Introducing the DigiQ Blue, a Bluetooth-enabled electronics billiard coach that fits inside a soft rubber housing and attaches to the butt end of any pool, snooker, or billiard cue. The DigiQ Blue constantly monitors your stroke and sends detailed statistics of every shot to your smartphone or mobile device. The DigiQ Blue checks your stroke for inconsistencies and gives you immediate feedback by quietly vibrating when it detects a flaw and seamlessly transmitting that information to your phone or tablet. There are three preset modes as well as a fully customizable option to suit all players from beginners to professionals. The DigiQ app also tracks your data over time so you can visually see your improvement. Numbers don't lie. Train smarter. The DigiQ Blue.